Hello and welcome to Ubuntu Basics Lesson 2. We're going to start off with some useful shell commands, so pull up a terminal. First command is sudo. Sudo stands for super user do and allows you to perform administrative tasks. Simply run sudo command to execute that command with heightened permissions. For example, sudo ls followed by your password, which, by the way, won't appear, so don't freak out when you don't see the characters on the screen, will run ls as the super user or administrative user. Now, this isn't very useful because ls doesn't need administrative permissions, but, for example, if we were to try and delete a read-locked file, we would need administrative permissions. Next, and closely related, we're going to look at apt. apt is Debian's package manager, and since Ubuntu is based on Debian, it's used in Ubuntu as well. To install, remove, or repair installations, we can simply type apt-get install, apt-get remove, etc. Let's try installing something now. For example, apt-get install genie, my favorite text editor. Oh no, there's an error. How come? Well, as we can see here, permission is denied, and the program asks us, are you root? No, we're not. We're just a regular user. So, hitting the up, up key to retrieve my last command, I can simply scroll back and type sudo. This runs the command as administrator, and since I've already typed my password, it remembers for 30 minutes. Run as administrator, app get install works fine. Simply confirming that I wish to install the program will begin the download process. This may take a while on larger programs, but since this is just a text editor, it only takes a few moments. The system then automatically runs a script to install the program so that it will be fully set up with your operating system. As you can see, it's already finished, so we can type genie, and the program we just installed will execute. Let's say we wanted to remove the program. Well, we would simply type sudo apt-get remove genie. It will ask us to confirm. I'll hit no because I'll actually need that for the next part, and tap enter. As you can see, if you answer no, the installation or removal is aborted. Now let's look at using the command line to move and edit files. To copy a file, you simply type cp source file destination file. I'll look at what's in the current folder with ls and see that we have hello.sh here from the last lesson. Let's try copying that. So cp hello.sh hello2.sh Whoops, I mistyped the name, but it doesn't matter because that was the destination file. Typing ls will show us that I successfully copied hello.sh to cello2.sh. And running cello2.sh running cello2.sh will confirm that the file was in fact copied, including all attributes such as execute permissions. To delete a file, because it's now cluttering up my home folder, we can simply type rm chllo 22sh since that is the file we wish to delete. Hit enter. Typing ls again confirms that it's been deleted. Finally, let's look at editing a configuration file. In this case, .bashrc. This is a file in your home directory that's hidden. You can't see it normally with ls without adding a few special options. And it configures your command line. So to take a look at it, let's type nano.bashrc. As you can see, nano opens up with a file here, and scrolling down, we can see that it's quite long. Most of this doesn't need to be edited, although there are comments to tell you exactly what's going on. But the main part we want to look at is the alias section. Aliases are extremely useful. They allow you to type one thing and have the command line see something else. For example, because I don't like typing sudo every time I need to do an administrative action, I'm going to do alias s equals quote sudo end quote and hit control O to save the file. As you can see, nano reports that it's written 177 lines and we now have the alias s equals sudo in our command line. This means that typing s will be seen by the command line as typing sudo. Don't worry, this only affects the actual command. So, for example, if you have an s in your file name, it won't turn into sudo. This just means that we can type s apt-get install instead of sudo apt-get install, or s rm whatever instead of sudo rm whatever. 
which in my opinion is extremely useful. I'll hit Control X to get out of this and type S, and as you can see, the alias is already taken. Now for some people it might not, depending on the exact configuration of your system. Don't worry, just close the terminal, start a new one, and try again, and there you go. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll be talking about bash scripting and some other very useful commands. Until then, have a great day.